Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Hey, Julie, we're going to have a great show today. You know what the topic is? You know what the topic is? What? (laughs) You do know what the topic is. Did you just forget? (laughs) <laughs> I was seeing whether what you think the topic is. It's because you oh, just renamed my show. Okay. So what yes, is the official true. topic with the fancy hey, name? Hey, by the way, you've got to turn your uh, mic down. Like We can hear the background noise, oh. so whatever you got playing. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, listen, guys, we get a lot of direct emails from all of you. And today, I think I had uh, three or four uh, calls to just listeners. People are asking me questions. People who aren't even, well, two of them are coaching clients. The others weren't. And it's always... I don't know, funny to me, I guess, that you guys are surprised when we actually do what we say we're going to do when we say we're going to do it. So you guys ask for help when we help you. It doesn't matter if you're a brokerage or it doesn't matter if you're an individual agent, a new agent, a seasoned agent. And like I said, we are always here to help. You know, our focus is agents. We're an agent-centric coaching company. We have lots and lots and lots of brokers as private clients, but the brokers who come to us are the ones that also have the mindset of have agent-centric brokerages. Because at the end of the day, guys, the agents are the heart and soul of this business, and they always have been. It's just the brokers like to think that they're more important than agents. And you know what? It's not true, because if you have no agents, there is no brokerage. You know, So at the end of the day, the main focus of our company has always been agents. So we get a ton of questions, and the questions that I've been getting lately are those of you who are interested or think you're interested in coaching. And, um, you know, a lot of you have been in coaching before. I would say probably 90% of all the people that join one of our coaching programs, not Premier necessarily, but certainly VI, our Premier uh, Coaching Plus, Premier uh, uh, Coaching VIP, and then Elite. I would say all the ones that join the upper tier programs have been, in, virtually all of them have been in other coaching programs. Would you say that's true, Julie, from your observation? Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Yeah. And it's interesting where the other coaching, so like have been, I heard, hopefully you guys heard past tense. Occasionally we get people that are involved. It's fascinating to me what you, many of you come to these calls and you're expect what you're expecting or what you had expect expected from your private coaching relationship. And what you received were two different things. So I had a very interesting call today um, from a guy that we're probably going to hire to be a coach great background. The guy was a ranger. He's worked in brokerage. He's, and I know he's listening. So you, Julie's got to actually make the hiring decision. But, and anyway, I was talking with him and he actually is working for, as a coach for um, one of our competitors. And he told me what he didn't like in that experience was virtually all the other coaches, quote unquote, there have never sold real estate before. And he was like shocked. He said, when he got there and realized that not many of his, uh, you know, coaching cohorts had ever sold uh, real estate. And I wasn't shocked because that's the way it's been for a long time. The thing is, is that agents have never really, truly, I don't know, been educated on how to go about hiring a real estate coach. You guys don't know what questions to ask. You don't know, you know, to think, you think you join a coaching program and that you're going to get, you know, systems and scripts and you're going to get all your questions answered. You're going to get, you know, you don't. 99% of the coaching programs out there, what you get is literally a series of scripted calls with someone who's never sold real estate before. It sounds preposterous for me to say that. And, if, and you guys are thinking I'm coach bashing. I'm sure I'm going to get a nasty email about this, you know, telling me how unprofessional I am. But look, I know it might sound unprofessional, but the reality of it is, is that it's still true. And agents have to discern basically who they have to start getting educated on A, whether they truly need a coach. And that's what today's show is about. Or B, whether they actually, you know, are going, once they determine they need a coach, whether or not they know how to go about asking the tough questions to determine who they're going to hire to be their coach. So here's the problem from a owner of a coaching business. Here's the, pers- here's the problem with when you start basically dealing with hiring coaches to coach uh, agents is that the experience level of the coach is what ultimately determines that one-on-one experience. And if you have somebody who is not experienced in real estate and then experienced in uh, coaching or learning to be experienced in coaching, you're going to have a very crappy experience for that client. 
And it's very difficult, and some of you guys who are interested or know this word, it's almost, it is impossible to scale a personal services business because of the fact that you can never make the experience the same, no matter, like, you know, when you work with us and you guys, many of you come to us as premier coaching clients, that experience is something that Julie and I have personally created and controlled. So I promise you it's at the highest level, you know, but if, and we, when you hire us to be your VIP coach, if you decide to get one of our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, the people that are working in our one-on-one -on -one coaching team have been with Julie and I for years and have only used our system, and, but they've been exposed to other things too, so they can compare and contrast. But that's the difference. And, you know, maybe as a result of that mindset and that approach to business, Julie and I will never have, you know, 10,000 or 15,000 coaching clients. And we don't give a rat's ass because we'd much rather have it so that when you guys came to, uh, to us, that the experience you had was exceptional. And then we actually made it so that when you started doing business with us, you never left. And that's really the point of today's call because we have, you know, guys, a huge amount of agents who've been with us for literally over 10 years. And we've been their personal coaches. A lot of these guys you've been exposed to um, when I did the superstar interview interviews on Thursday. So I, what we prepared for you today are essentially questions you need to ask yourself if you think you're ready to hire a coach. And in our normal direct, you know, practical and tactical format, we're not going to sugarcoat it and we're not going to try to sell you anything. We're just going to be really, really painfully honest with you. And you need to be honest with yourself and be careful that if you're not if you're truly not ready to hire a coach after you've gone through this, then you shouldn't because you're just going to be wasting your money because you're just not, you know, you're not at a point where you want or ready to be coached. And not everybody is. You do have to have a certain mindset. You do have to be at a point where you're receptive to learning. Um, or if you're in that, you know, the stages of learning and, you know, Maslow stages of learning or stages of mastery, you guys might be familiar with that. If you're in one of the first two stages where basically you don't know what you don't know in essence, you're not going to be a very good coaching client. You're just going to waste your money. So um, anyway, that is the focus of today's show. Julie, do you have any shout outs or do you want me to just get right into the first part of the, uh, yes. the, the, the I actually have, <laughs> I really have a, a really great review that kind of uh, ties into this, I guess is the best way to put it. And this is from Erica Ragsdale. I'll just read this quickly. This will be our only review. And what we're referring to is the Harris Rules book, which you can get on Amazon.com. So uh, Erica writes, I work as an agent in new home construction and your strategies work in this field. You have broken the mold as far as coaching in this sector of real estate. There are coaching industry standard superstars. However, the Harris team makes it so easy to understand and apply. I find myself after listening to an industry standard coach, I'm walking away feeling like a blueprint, like the roadmap hasn't even been clarified. I feel like I need more straight talk and less fluff. With Tim and Julie, I have never walked away from a podcast feeling that I don't have relevant tools to stand out, get new perspective, and work smarter. The coaching for prospecting, relationship building, work ethic, objections, scripting, figuring out what you need to live your best life, and most importantly, how to help the most people at the highest and best way. I could go on and on about how much I appreciate Tim and Julie's insight and frankness. Their podcast has opened my eyes to the reality of real estate and what it takes to be successful. Harris Rules, the book, has told the truth about mapping out a way to gain more financial control over one's life. I'm thankful for the hard facts, especially in the world of spin. Buying this book is like an investment in your continued education, but the most practical, applicable way. Thank you. And right, right signs off, hashtag drill down, one of your phrases, Tim. So back to you. This oh, I like that, Erica. That, that, that was very good. About. Yeah. 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 yeah very good. Now, now that my head's like 10 feet tall and I can b barely move around my little <laughs> studio here. <laughs> Back to reality. And Back more, to reality. When, uh, I have to say, Megan Cook finally got her pre-listing package done, posted it on Facebook. It looks beautiful. Now you've got to go use it. So nice job getting that done, Megan Cook in Portland, Oregon. And that's it. Back to you. All right. So the title of today's show is Real Estate Coaching Question Mark. Are you truly ready to hire a coach? Now, we're going to start out by a very simple and painless quiz. No one hits quizzes and tests more than me, and I promise you guys this one's going to be easy. So I'm about to ask you 10 questions. And I know a lot of brokers use this uh, podcast for their agent training. And so if you have a bunch of agents in front of you, office manager, uh, team leader, or whatever, you need to make sure they're all basically pulling out a piece of paper and a pen right now. 10 simple questions, and uh, it's a simple one to 10 type thing. And I'm, you guys know that 10 is obviously the best. So here it is. Rate yourself. One means you have no clue. 10 means you're the best. You're the best of the best. Five means you're working on it. Uh, you're working on it, but you're you're inconsistent. Okay. So I'm going to ask you ten questions, and here's how we're going to do this. After I ask the ten questions, and this is very simple, 
you're going to add up your score. And then we're going to basically do a little bit of uh, coming to Jesus with regards to whether you actually, you know, are ready to hire a coach. And if you're not, don't. If you're not, if you don't go through this call today, this, this show, and you aren't 100% convinced you're ready to hire a coach, you're only 50% convinced after the results of today's show, please do not hire a coach because you're just wasting your money. All right. Um, number one. Are you scale one to 10 or rather one through 10 consistent lead generation? This means both quality and quantity of leads. Are you generating enough leads to meet or achieve your financial goals every month, quarter and year? One to 10. Are you awash in leads? One to 10 folks, write down your number. Told you this was easy. Number two, business operations, business organization, rate your systems. Are you consistently, are, are you constantly recreating the wheel or are you following proven systems? You find yourself basically in a big, uh, you know, it's funny as I ask this question, I already know that nobody in listening is very good at their business organization. So, <laughs> but the reality of it is, is you might think you are. So let's write that the answer one through 10 business operations, business organization, rate your systems. 10, 10 is the best of the best. One is, you know, you suck at it. Are you constantly recreating the wheel or are you following your proven systems? Question number three, write these down guys, your ability to hold yourself accountable to getting things done. You know, do you have memorized a tattoo on your head? I'm a doer, I get things done. Or are you one of these, I'll do it tomorrow, or rather, I'll do it later this morning. I'll do it this afternoon. I'll do it this evening. I'll do it tomorrow. It never gets done. Is that you? Rate your ability to hold yourself accountable to getting things done. One means you know you suck at it. 10 means you could write a book about it. Um, next question, rather, retirement planning. I had a call today with a gal. She's listening, and I won't mention her name. Um, she was uh, 61, I believe, no retirement, uh, no rental properties, no plans. And, you know, I, she called asking me for help on how to add agents to her office. And we had a nice conversation. She was a broker. And we had a nice conversation about how, in most cases, unless you're going to have over 100 agents, you're probably not going to have a profitable brokerage. And given her, um, you know, her personal plans, and her lack of financial you know, readiness for her future, I asked her, and this was not a coaching client, I asked her to reconsider or at least seriously reconsider the path that she's on with trying to scale a real estate brokerage because it might not be the best move for her personally. And you know what? She didn't like me telling her that, but she was respectful, gal from Ohio. She was respectful, but I could tell I kind of like, you know, she was a little bit, she didn't, it, it wasn't very motivational. Yeah, well, it hit her nerve because- I was telling her something that no one else, I had a feeling, had told her, asked her to think about things that no one else was asking her to think about because then, you know, she got sold a brokerage. Woo, I'm now a broker. She got sold a brokerage brand. Oh, oh, now I'm a big famous brand associated with a big famous national company. And now the realities are coming in that, hey, guess what? You probably, she probably isn't going to ever make any meaningful money out of it. And she would have been much better off if she just focused on being a real estate agent or, She's going to have to basically make it so that this is her life mission. She's going to have to work harder than she ever has before, 10 times harder than what it would take for her to make probably, you know, 10 times the amount of money. Like if she stayed a listing agent, she would have made, all, she can make a lot more money a lot faster than doing what she's planning on doing, unless she's actually willing to essentially give away the next five years of her life and just work like she's never worked before. Then she might have a shot at making this brokerage profitable. Okay. That's the kind of calls we have with folks. No bullshit calls, guys. So retirement planning, rate yourself on one through 10. One, you know, you got to work on it. 10, you know, you're kicking butt at. Point number next, being personally financially sober. Are you one of these agents that right now you get a call from somebody or an email trying to sell you leads? Are you going to be like tempted? Do you even know how much your personal or business overhead is? Financially sober means you have a very clear, constant, uh, uh, viewpoint exactly how much money you're spending, exactly how much money you have to spend every month to basically pay your bills, to basically save, to accomplish your personal financial goals. One means you're terrible at it. Ten means you're excellent at it. And you could write a book about it. Uh, next point, taking care of your health on a daily basis, weight, food, etc. Is your personal health regime a uh, an active part of your life? Are you exercising? Do you, you know, it's funny, Julie, you ask somebody if they're overweight and they'll say no. Mm -hmm. They'll say, most people say, no, I'm good. You know, it's because you're right. the same level of fat as everyone you know. It's not that you're not overweight. It's just everyone you know oh, is overweight. You're comparing yep. yourself to other people that are overweight. 
But most of you guys listening are 20 to 30 pounds overweight. And here's the thing. It's okay that you, as long as you know you can do something about it. So the thing you got to do about it, the, the actions you're going to have to take to do something about that are going to cause you to take a lot of massive action about what you eat, how you exercise, things that maybe you've been procrastinating. We talk about that a little bit every day on every podcast, what Julie and I are doing. Um, and it works. I mean, Julie and I are now in our, uh, Julie would say mid 40s. I'm going to say late 40s because it's probably the truth. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're having to force ourselves to do what we don't want to do. And we don't want to do it at the highest level when it comes to our personal health. But we're doing it but for the you sake have to be of ba- actively about it. You can't be like, well, you know, I go on a walk now and then. You have to actively be in control of it. So don't rate yourself a 10 if you can't say that. If you can't be honest about you have a real plan, you're following an actual nutrition plan, you actually know what your ideal weight is, and you either are there or you're darn close to it. Because it takes a lot of work, at least for most of us. Now, are oh, yeah. 20-something millennial types that are listening? Because we have quite a crowd of them. Your metabolism is still kicking butt, and more power to you. That's great while it lasts. <laughs> so it's a little <laughs> bit different for everyone. But be careful how you rate yourself and be very honest about this because it does matter. Yeah, I mean, I here's a little foreshadowing for those of you in your, your uh, 20s. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Shit changes when you get into your 30s. <laughs> you yeah. know, and that's that's sometimes not in, in, some it, and sometimes yeah. early, and you're not, and you're, it's not going to be different for you. So do yourself a favor, those of you in your 20s, do yourself a favor, listen to what your coach or your future coach is saying. You need, you must to, you must get into the habit of taking care of your body now, because as you get older, it gets a billion, not just a little bit, a billion times harder to lose weight, a billion times harder to form those new habits. A billion times harder to rationalize um, just being fat for the rest of your life. The problem with not taking care of your body, guys, if, is you're not going to have the energy, the enthusiasm, the self-confidence to then go out and kick some serious ass in your business. When you're taking care of your body and your health, magically your business gets better. You know, it's interesting. It doesn't work the other way. You guys can be kicking an ass in your business, but if your body's not doing great, you're not ever going to basically have any consistent energy level to make your business scale. That's the reason that we approach our coaching from all angles. Okay. So anyway, next question. Uh, taking care of your relationships, scale. Yeah. Taking care of your relationships, scale one to 10, you know, your family, your friends, your children, you know, look, some of them are jerks and you don't want to have them in your lives anymore. I get it. But some of them aren't. And you're just, you're kind of abusing them and taking them for granted. One of the, we talk about this on our podcast too. When we talk about this as part of your morning routine, overtly show gratitude towards the most important people in your life every day. You know, Julie and I always make a point of spending time together in the morning. We usually will go on a swim or a walk. We talk about that on the show. We always are saying I love you and give each other hugs and all the rest of it. Now, we do that as part of our morning routine, but it also reinforces the relationship. We do that for our daughter. We do that for everyone who matters to us because that's how you keep your relationship strong. How would you like to kick some serious ass this year in your real estate business? Make a ton of money. Let's say even you get your body in shape. So you're the best version of you when you look in the money or you look in the mirror and you look in your wallet, but your relationships are terrible. It's you see how you can't have that without having at least some resemblance of I hate the word balance, but re, at least some resemblance of respect for all categories of your life. Now, a little uh, coaching here, if you don't mind, is when you are working on your business and your body, it's always best to bring your family or your loved ones in with that in with you on that particular goal. You tell them, mommy, daddy you know, or whatever, I was trying to, or will be losing 30 pounds. And this is what I'm going to be doing. Put your schedule on the refrigerator, uh, go and maybe get them to uh, participate in having a, um, you know, a low carb lifestyle, a, an exercise based lifestyle. You will always have to lead by example, and then they'll follow. Don't try to basically go to them and force them to change. They'll change when they see you changing. That's the way it works. All right. Next point. Are you learning and reading things to make you better? And this the very simple, you know, one through 10, you guys got it by now, what 10 is, what one is. And so are you learning and, and reading things that make you better? Are you actually overtly, well, a lot of you are because you read our book, but are you going out of your way to expose yourself th- to things that are going to make you smarter? I am a huge listener of podcasts. Big surprise, right? I listen to other people's podcasts for all kinds of different ideas, but I listen mostly to make myself smarter. I love history sm- uh, podcasts. You know, Julie and I love podcasts. We don't listen to any political podcasts. 
We don't listen to any podcasts that are trendy or any of that crap. We listen to things that are going to make our brain smarter, make us better people. Why? Because as coaches, if we're not getting better ourselves financially, physically smarter, you know, physically, uh, mentally, spiritually, and if we're dropping the ball in any of the important categories, we're going to be terrible for you. So we have to keep ourselves always on the edge of learning what's next, learning what's new, knowing what's hype, knowing what's not. Um, and so we can get better at our craft. Do you have the same mindset, guys? Or are you just basically saying, I learned what I learned 20 years ago and I'm not learning anything new. Work for me, then it'll work for me now. Is that your mindset? Might be. All right, next question. Um, and there's only two more. Ability to avoid drama and any other lights, uh, life-sucking energies. This is a real plague in the real estate business. So someone comes to you. Are you one of these people that people love to come to to talk about drama? Did you hear? Oh my gosh, did you know? Oh my gosh, did you see? Did you read? Are you one of these people that basically is the vortex of gossip and negative energy and negative talking? You probably are more than you think. Are you, do you right now have people that love to share stuff with you about other people? That means that, here, has there ever been anything uh, beneficial that's come from gossiping? Are you allowing those people in your life? Are you allowing people to basically use and abuse you? Are you forgetting to put your own mask on first when it comes to uh, you know, your own life? Are you hanging yourself on the cross too often and sacrificing yourself, allowing all your best energies every single day to be wasted on essentially other people's drama? All of us fall prey to that. It's very, you know, it's very normal in real estate, especially real estate brokerages, for there to be a big nasty gossip pool that goes on all the time because it's an excuse not to work. It's an excuse not to do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level. And here's the essence of gossip, by the way. When, I, when you hear someone, uh, when you say to somebody rather, did you hear, or some version of that, have you noticed that you actually get a little spike, a little internal chemical release of endorphins or something? Our bodies love the feeling of passing along information or receiving it. If you get an email right now, oh my gosh, did you hear the latest on Bob? You right now are going to start bouncing your mind around what the hell's going on with Bob. It's exciting. You're addicted to it. And that's what happens to a lot of people. Last question. How willing are you? <laughs> you guys like this one. How willing are you to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level? Or do you really believe that your highest and truest purpose on this planet is to be happy? Is that really what you're pursuing? Happiness? Have you been sold into the gospel of it's just about being happy, man. Why make yourself uncomfortable? Why be discomfort? Why do what you don't want to do? Dude, just make yourself happy. Follow your passions. The money will follow. Oh, I'm starting to sound sarcastic, Julie. Anything you want to tag on to that one? Starting. <laughs> well, What'd you say? I'll just add to, the, I'll add to the sarcasm. How is that working out for you? You know? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I will never forget. I'll just share a very quick story. Actually, it's in the book, Okay. So I remember struggling with that whole follow your passion because I would much rather on most days be in a practice room learning some great Beethoven piano piece. I could do that all day long. I have no problem with that. Time passes. I don't even notice it. Okay. Nerd and alert. So, nerd alert. Nerd alert. Well, and I was a music major <laughs> in college. At the same time, we were getting our licenses and I would struggle with, I didn't feel like a natural salesperson. I, this isn't really what I'm passionate about. Until we went to what I, I had kind of sarcastically joked about, well, how is this going to go? We were at a Howard Britton event, and it was a realtor talent show, which some of you, when I say that, are also scoffing. Like, how is that going to go, right? But I'll tell you what, and you remember this too, Tim, because some of our friends I today uh, were from that. And yep. uh, I can't remember in Phoenix, he was like a stand-up guy. You, you know who I'm talking about. Russ, Russell, Russell, is it Shaw? Yeah. I think? Shaw. Yeah. Okay, yeah. freaking hilarious, all right? Like better than anything you've seen on TV. He was the first one that kind of made me sit up and think, huh, you can be in real estate and still have your passion. You just don't have to make your living at it. That was my first thing. And then Gary Obaldini got up and sang and played his guitar and was incredible. And that was a changing event for me to get clear on the fact that, you know what? Sometimes following your passion isn't 
the thing that's going to make you the money that you need to not just survive but thrive in this world, that was significant for me. And I think that so many people get so distracted by, you know, I just, I'm just not a natural salesperson. I, I mean, I'm hard-pressed to think of really any of our coaching clients who rolled out of bed as a successful salesperson. There's a few, but most people would say when they were in kindergarten and raising their hand what they wanted to do when they grew up, probably being in real estate wasn't the first thing that came to their mind. That's okay. I mean, there's a big part of the book about that, so I won't go on any further because i got to get ready for another call. But, yeah, but read the so, book, so, Harris Rules. We talk about that. So the, go ahead. This Sorry. is going to be a two, this is going to be a two part. No problem, Julie. I know a lot of people can relate to that. Every time Julie talks about her, Julie comes from a world of academia. No salespeople in her family. They're all school teachers or physicists or you know something like that. They're not salespeople. My family's not so different. All you know, my dad worked for the government. My you know he back in the '60s he worked for Rockwell International. You know, uh, I mean, you know, these, we did not come from, you, no, no sales background in our families, not to speak of. And we had to learn it. Julie had to learn it way more than me because she was bred in a culture of basically more degrees, the better. You know, her sister's got two master's degrees and I think, what, two undergraduate degrees, two master's and a PhD, right? I mean, it's these are people that love, they, that's a collection. She's got the whole thing, baby. And duplicate. <laughs> that's right. And, and right, but that's the, that's you guys. A lot of you are coming from the same place. And Julie was a uh, recorded music artist in an orchestra, not one but two. So a lot of you are surprised, and you're saying, "Well, how can you be a great salesperson and you know be really great at you know, that into the world?" Because you think that you can only be that sort of analytical, introverted, you know, self-directed, uh, you know, myopic type person. You don't realize you can do both, but you can. You can learn to do it. Julie did. She's probably the number one coach in the nation now. So let's round out the bend and let's add up our points. Okay. And Julie, thank you for cleaning up my notes because actually this works out perfectly. All right. So there's 10 questions that I asked you, uh, all of you. Now, if you scored 90 points or better, that's an A. <laughs> this is not, um, you know, so for those of you who are, uh, you know, let's say younger than 35, you have been gr uh, judged on a curve your entire life. Uh, we don't do that. So we're using the old school grading method. And uh, so there's going to be no uh, curve here. So a, uh, a 90 or above is an A. And 80 or above is a B, you know, 80 to 89, obviously. Uh, 70 is a C. And anything less than, uh, you know, 70, anything less, you know, uh, anything less than like a, you know, 69, and that's a fail. So there is no D. It's basically if you don't have at least a 70, you are failing. That means that you add up all your points. If you're being honest, most of you are less than 60. If you're being honest, most of you are probably less than 40. So if you're being honest and you went through this process, the next question I have, and we're going to round, round the bend on today's show and we're going to pick up tomorrow, is where are, you following sh where are you falling short? Look at all the places that you rated yourself less than 10 on. Where do you see that you're weak? And here's the, here's the two last questions I wrote down, or at least let me just ask you this one. How long have you, ha, has this been an area of weakness for you? Julie, are you still on? Just for another couple minutes, okay. yep. Okay, so Julie's going to tell you guys a story since we're talking about her music background. And she's going to tell you a story about how she never learned to play the piano properly until she hired a true coach. And she's going to tell yep. you, and this is how a lot of you run your real estate businesses, by the way, your lives, full of hacks until you realize your hacks are only going to get you so far, Julie. Yeah. And I'll do kind of the shorter version so that I can get on my call here. So uh, I said I was a music major. That was with flute. That was my main instrument. Okay. So through, I mean, from the time I was maybe nine years old, go, coming up through middle school, high school, college, all this kind of thing, I always had a great flute teacher, but they had a backup as also being a piano teacher. Okay. Now, Many, many music teachers, piano is a, a basis. It's like, you know, brushing your teeth for your musician. You have to learn piano. But that doesn't mean you're great at it. It doesn't mean that you learned it correctly. It just means that you can kind of get around on the keyboard, right? Well, as a kid, you don't know the difference. And since I wasn't probably going to be a piano major, it didn't necessarily make a difference very obviously. And I competed in piano competitions and I did okay. I never played the hardest stuff, but I did okay. So how would I know? Well, I'll tell you how I found out is when I hired a real piano teacher who went to Juilliard 
and actually is a regular performer for Cirque du Soleil around the world. This is when we lived in Vegas, okay? Now, I can tell you the difference between somebody who is a honest-to-God, classically trained pianist from Juilliard and everyone else is freaking night and day to the point where it, the accountability was different, the knowledge base was different. He instantly detected all of my little workaround hacks that I had either figured out on my own or through teachers that were not really pianists. And I got to tell you, I, I was dumbfounded and also quite irritated <laughs> that it took that long and that experience. And of course, he's more expensive than, you know, the other ones for good reason. All right. That he was like, it, it was like, uh, magnifying glass on my lack of real piano skill. And for that reason, I know when I take piano lessons from him, it's a totally different game. You will be practicing, you will be learning, you will be revamping what you thought you knew. And there's so many things in real estate, Tim, that are just like that. I, I'll give you an example that I, I'll draw the correlation to. A lot of our listeners are saying, why would I need a pre-listing package and a formal listing presentation? I've taken every listing I've gone on. Well, guess what? That's because all the listings that you've gone on are people that you know or referrals. First time you've got to compete, you're going to be just like me taking piano from a real pianist and go, holy crap, now I finally know at least a little bit of what I don't know. And now I also know that the vastness of my uh, workaround hacks is probably way bigger than I even realize. I know that there's a lot of stuff that I don't know that he's going to detect every single freaking lesson. <laughs> okay. That's what a good coach does for you. That's what a non hack coach does for you. That's what somebody who has actually sold real estate and walked in your shoes and felt the 3 a.m. real estate night sweats that you probably are feeling fairly frequently. And, you know, don't be like me having to finally one day figure it out when I got a real teacher. It's a lot. And here's the real estate version of that. Going arrogantly to a listing, thinking you've got it in the bag, maybe even showing up late, assuming it's yours, and then finding out, guess what? You actually were competing, and you actually didn't get the listing. And it wasn't because they overpriced and undercommissioned. It's because they actually used a real presentation, closed harder, handled objections better, and when the listing. Hey, sister, you're late. Don't you got to go. All right. Yeah. So, guys, listen to your homework. Um, and we're, yep. We're, and those of you who are in Premier Coaching, make sure you get on Julie's semi-private call. It obviously starts now. Um, your homework is to show up tomorrow. You're going to finish uh, the rest of this tomorrow with us. And I want you to go to compareacoach.com, compareacoach.com. Um, and it walks you through basically all the toughest questions to ask when you're considering hiring a coach. What qualifies you to be a coach? Who, am I, who will my coach actually be? And what are their qualifications? Have you and my prospective coach ever sold real estate? Does your coach company have a financing program? How, da, 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 da. So there are one, two, 19 questions here. Okay. And you guys need to go and you need to have these questions at, at, at the ready when you are talking with anyone about being your coach. And you will be shocked when you find out consistently how many of them have never sold real estate before, how many of them, if they sold real estate, never sold very much. Really, basically, at the end of the day, you are going to self-discover the truth about real estate coaching. The reason that we're successful at it is because we're the real deal. And you guys need to make sure that before you make commitments to, that we're going to essentially have a direct determination on the quality of the future, your business and personal life, that you align yourself with someone who's actually been there and done that. So go to comparecoach.com. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. You guys have a fantastic day. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.